All right, thank you so much for joining today. So today we're gonna be talking about um, how to be credit focused to increase closings. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and dive right into it. And my name is Ivory Becker. I am the owner and founder of Insight Strategies Credit Repair. Uh, so we are a credit repair organization that works specifically with loan officers and realtors in helping our um, prospective clients become borrowers. So our goal is to help each person that we work with secure the dream of home ownership um, or refinance their property as well. We do work with quite a bit of refinances. Um, so we have a partnership with our loan officers and realtors. That's a free process which allows you to keep a strong pipeline for anyone who may not uh, qualify at this point or who is looking to improve their credit scores to have better uh, better loan term options. So a little bit about us is we were started um, after I was banking and financial services industry, previously in financial planning as well, working on the regulatory side um, back in 2008, 2009 during the financial crisis. Um, within the default industry. So strong background in working um, on anything that has to do with credit, that has to do with default and really understanding the laws and regulations so we can be very successful in helping our client base. Um, so um, by the end of last year, we were able to remove almost 8,000 negative items from our clients' credit reports. And our goal is not to just uh, fix credit and send our clients on the way. We wanna make sure that by the time they're done with the process with us, they have a strong understanding of exactly how credit works and they can maintain a strong credit score and feel much more financial freedom, right? We want them to end the process, not living pay paycheck to paycheck if that's where they started when they began. So I'm um, happy to get into that in a bit more detail at the end of our prepared remarks for today, um, but I'm going to go ahead and dive right in. All right. So credit is one of the top reasons a borrower is denied when applying for a mortgage. So stick with me while I give you a little bit of data that has to do with credit, and I promise it will get um, much more interesting after we get past these numbers. So in the past decade, the median credit score for mortgages has increased by 20 points, according to the Housing Finance Policy Center. If we look even further back to 2005, it's increased far past that 20 points that we've seen in the past decade. Yet according to the data available to us, Americans took out a record number of mortgage loans in 2020. And the most recent information I have is for 2020. 2021 is not quite ready yet. Um, so by the fourth quarter of 2020, we alone saw 1.2 trillion in new home loans according to the New York Federal Reserve. So how does this make sense? Um, these two statistics are quite opposing, right? We talked about an increase in the median credit score versus seeing record number of mortgage applications or mortgage complete mortgage loans completed, excuse me. So if we take a deeper dive into that data, it shows that most of the Americans who took advantage of the lower interest rates with that had that median credit score of 786. So they were those individuals that were in the excellent credit category. And they're the ones that benefited from the low, low interest rates primarily. Um, and many of these new mortgages were refinances to take advantage of those low interest rates. So not everyone could take advantage of the low rate opportunity. Um, credit access still remains at historically tight um, with the median credit score of new mortgages increasing steadily since 2008. So according to uh, the Housing Finance and Policy Center, the median credit score for new consumer mortgages in 2005 was 696. So if we compare that to the data in 2020 as a fourth quarter, the median credit score being 786, we can see such a drastic difference. And now mortgage rates are starting to increase again. Um, so what does that mean for you as loan officers? Those borrowers who have already secured mortgages at great rates are likely not to refinance and likely not to move into a new property to because they want to preserve their low interest rates, right? They want to keep what they already have. Um, so we could see a rush of consumers trying to secure a mortgage while they can that are in a different type of category that are outside of that excellent credit uh, status. And this may mean... Um, you know, not seeing those applicants come to the table that have, you know, the great credit, the great income. 
So it's more important now than ever before to secure a process to keep your pipeline full of applicants who can make it to the closing table. So what I'm what I want to pull up here, and you'll see this here on the screen, is just a representation of the, the pipeline during the loan process, the mortgage process, excuse me. So during the mortgage inquiry stage right here at the top half, we know that as much as one third of people fall out of the process because their credit scores and because of not knowing what kind of credit potential, credit improvement potential that they have available to them. And this cascades down into the next stage here. And let me let me put on the, the pointer, make it easier to see where I'm referencing. Um, so this cascades into this credit application stage. Uh, if there's less people that can qualify because of credit, they're not going to move on to take an application. They may be denied, you know, told, hey, let's work on your credit before you even apply. Um, then during the application stage, we see even more people that fall out of the process, right? They may have a denial due to their credit score or some other reason during the application stage. And in the final stage, you have approved applicants um, that often should close, um, but you may encounter some leakage in your pipeline um, because some borrowers may not be as committed to you as you are to them. Um, whether that means they're going to another lender or they're taking some sort of an action that changes their qualification, among, of course, other reasons. Um, so as a loan officer, you have to work all through, very hard um, all throughout your pipeline to keep your borrowers with you. And that's nothing new to you, especially if you've been in the industry for quite some time. So working on credit helps the borrower either qualify for a loan in the first place or get a better deal on the loan that they already have in process. So focusing on credit uh, can help you as a lender keep the borrower with you and prevent them from going elsewhere. It creates a more sticky prospect. So let's look at the actual numbers. So this data is from Humda. So what impact does work uh, does working on borrower credit have for you as a lender? So in rough terms, 35% of the inquiries result in a closing. So if a borrower makes it to the application stage, about 50% um, result in closings. So this means that throughout the process, there's a loss of 65% of applicants. So if we can create less leakage in this pipeline by being credit focused, how many more loans could you close? How much more revenue could that generate for you as a loan officer? And beyond that, what is the potential referral base you could create by making happier borrowers who you've made a meaningful change in their life? For those borrowers, the process um, for them is much more than a transaction. You've completely changed their lives. Um, you've not only helped them secure their dream of owning a home, which they may not have thought was a possibility, but you've kickstarted their ability to achieve other financial goals. Um, that they may have just thought they were never going to get to. So I'll start with a question to ask yourself. When you run an applicant's credit report and they're not ready or not able to buy, what is your next move? For some, do you always look for an applicant's improvement potential? For others, do you only look for improvement potential if the applicant asks? Or lastly, do you never look for potential improvements? Perhaps you don't have time or you don't know what to refer them to, how to help them, um, how to send the borrower down the right path, and, and you don't want to cause them a worse situation. Regardless of your answer, don't be ashamed. We're all here to discuss the options available that you may not have been aware of. And would you be surprised to find out that only, only about 50% of loan officers do look for credit improvement potential? You already have a lot of work on your plate. So how many applications do you think you've taken in the last year from people who don't qualify due to credit? How about from borrowers who qualify but decline to move forward due to the impact their credit is having on the interest rate or other loan terms. 
What if there was a way to identify the applicants that are serious enough to fix their credit in six to eight months, sometimes less, and make sure that you are the loan you are the loan officer they're going to use when they are ready to move forward with the mortgage. So what you need in those scenarios is a credit repair pipeline or a sales funnel. And I'm not talking about adding more work to your plate or changing your current process in any, in any way, but creating a streamline that keeps more prospects in your pipeline, leading to a greater conversion rate to actual closings. So if you left the credit improvement process to the borrower, what would the likelihood be that they would actually follow through? Uh, and I'm sure a lot of people have been there where they have a prospective borrower that um, they check in on, you know, every, you know, three months, six months. And, you know, it just seems as if they're spinning their wheels. They're trying really hard. They really want that home, but, but they can't quite make it. So credit restoration is confusing, it's overwhelming, and it's very time consuming. And who's to say that borrower, that prospective borrower, won't just try to go to another lender who promises them that they're a credit expert um, and either snags your deal or sends them down the wrong path, worsening their credit and putting them even further behind than when they started. So how can we present this? How can we prevent this from happening? Excuse me. So by partnering with us um, here at Insight Strategies, we can not only work directly with the prospective borrowers to gain a resolution in as little as six months, but we also ensure that they come back to you to complete the mortgage process. Um, so we want to turn them into what we're calling a boomerang applicant. You throw them at us and we throw them right back at you, but with better credit. So let's get into the details. Um, let's look at some examples of how credit repair can resolve the hard stops in the application process so you can bring more of those clients to the closing table. Um, these are real scenarios that we deal with every day with, when we're working with lenders like you. So we want to make sure you know what is possible. So I'm going to start with um, a scenario we've seen quite a bit more frequently over, we'll call it, our, our COVID times, it's become, it's become a, a time period for us at this point. Um, so a client that cannot refinance for one year due to a mortgage delinquency. So when do we see this? Uh, often this occurs because of an inaccurate display of late payments. And I'll explain what that means because there's several scenarios that this can fall under. Um, I'm gonna start actually with the third, the third bullet point here. The borrower was enrolled in a forbearance or a deferment that should not have been marked past due. Um, we saw this all the time, especially in 2021 and 2020, of course. Um, we saw it outside of the pandemic, but definitely a lot during the pandemic. Uh, when a borrower is enrolled in any sort of a modification program um, or a forbearance or deferment, where that program outlines that they should not be marked past due and we see a late mark on their credit report, that is something that is a very valid reason that should be disputed and we can work to removing from their credit report to, of course, help increase their credit score, but get you past that hard stop. Uh, this can often be seen too when a mortgage is transferred to a new lender. Um, sometimes what we see is the final payment from the previous servicer. I should have, I meant servicer and not lender. Um, when the, when the, when the mortgage was transitioned, the previous servicer sometimes will show that last payment as delinquent when it shouldn't have. That new servicer had taken that payment. So that's another instance, um, that's very valid for getting that late mark removed. Um, another reason that is less common that I'll explain are these top two right here. So I'm going to give some background or a little bit of information on the Fair Credit Reporting Act. So with the Fair Credit Reporting Act, which is what governs how information can appear on the credit report, it outlines that all information on the report must be accurate and it must be complete. So if we find a client is showing on their credit report mismatching late payment history, meaning let's say, let's say Experian is showing a late payment in September of 2020, but TransUnion is showing that late payment in October of 2020, and let's say um, Equifax as well. That mismatching data 
um, can allow us to work to a removal of that late history. Because again, all information must be accurate. We can argue what is accurate if it is inconsistent. Similarly, if we have a borrower that, um, let's say the late payment is showing the same on all three bureaus, let's say it's showing September 2020 on all three bureaus, um, but they were actually late in August, and we have statements to prove that, we can supply the bureaus with the statement for, um, for the month that they're showing delinquent, and obviously that statement is going to show that the payments were made on time, allowing us to get a removal of that late mark. So there's many different scenarios, and our goal is to utilize the system um, within the legal confines to help our clients get the results that they want and help them have the ability to um, move forward with mortgage financing. So number two, hard stop, no credit history. So if you encounter a prospective borrower that has no credit score, this can come from a couple of different um, areas. One, perhaps they, they just have never had credit um, or they haven't had credit in so long that their credit history has fallen off their report. So positive accounts will stay on the report for 10 years after they've been closed, um, negative accounts seven. Uh, or perhaps there's somebody who doesn't have enough open accounts. Maybe there is credit history on their report, right? It's just a lot of closed accounts. But there's not a single open account. Um, there does need to be records of open accounts within the last six months for a credit score to be generated. This may also occur if they only have collections reporting. Um, so that's similar to, to the prior mentioned item, right? We have to have open accounts um, within the, the last six months, a collection account, whether it's an open collection, is not considered um, an open and active account in the same way as a, a, it's a collection. It's just not considered an active account or an active debt. Hopefully that makes sense. So resolution for no credit. Resolution for no credit takes about one to three months. So what we do here at Insight Strategies is we establish a credit building plan for an individual with no credit. Um, and we give them a series of steps they can follow. We set them up with um, credit monitoring for their FICO scores. So that way we can monitor exactly when that credit score is generated and then transition them back to the loan officer to move forward with that mortgage process. Um, when we do this, most of the clients we find start with uh, or end the process, if you will, end that one to three months in the low 700s. So they do start with a really decent credit score. And, and sometimes we do see higher depending on if they can employ all of the available options for kickstarting a credit score. So scenario number three of a hard stop, um, you have a prospective borrower that is hundreds of points away from uh, from having a credit score that is high enough to qualify for financing. So this can be like this explains here, your applicant comes to the table with a credit score in the 400s or the 500s. They're far away from qualifying, even if they got 580, they may not have sufficient funds for a down payment. Maybe they need down payment assistance program or some other sort of program that requires a higher score. I know lenders, um, and brokers have different uh, programs available. They vary from lender to lender. Um, so that scenario is gonna, of course, adjust slightly depending on, on where you're from. But for this type of borrower, it is possible to have them ready within six to eight months. It's more likely the lower their score, if they're on this 400 side of things, it's more, it's more likely to be eight months. There are some scenarios where it could be up to a year, um, it, it just depends on how long that laundry list is on the credit report. For instance, if it is an individual that, let's say, has 10 or less negative accounts, they may be closer to that eight-month mark where an individual, and, and we've seen this has, you know, 20, 30, we've even seen up to 40 negative accounts, they're going to be a year um, because it is going to take quite a bit longer, even if we add good, positive, robust information to their report that's that helps to crowd out the negative information, we're, we're digging out of a hole. So it will take longer. Um, but this may be the borrower that you would think would take years and years to be able to get there. And, and it's quite a bit, po it's possible to reduce that timeline by quite a bit. Um, 
so we encourage loan officers to send these clients our way. Like I said, usually about six to eight months longer in some cases, but we see the average of six to eight months to get into the low sevens. Um, and if they follow our credit building plan process along with us working on the credit repair process to work on those derogatory accounts, they can definitely be mortgage ready. And throughout this process, our goal is also to help them with that debt to income ratio, make them look as clean and as pristine as possible so that that mortgage process is smooth. And then we are going to work with the loan officer as a team. We are going to include that loan officer on updates um, when that client has big score jumps. So that client, again, we want that boomerang client, right? We want them to come back to you credit ready and remember who you are and have you finish that process with them that you started. Okay, next, student loans. Um, so defaulted student loans. Um, depending on your loan type, of course, you may need uh, you may need to resolve CAVERS issues. So with defaulted student loans, we can help that borrower go through loan rehabilitation. This is what pulls the loans out of default, puts them in a good standing, and what happens is it actually creates a brand new student loan that starts fresh at a new, a new day one, you know, so they go through rehab and let's say they complete the rehab, rehabilitation process this month and um, what is it, February? And let's say March, they start brand new day one with their first new student loan payment. So this allows them to really have a, a reset, if you will, on their student loans. It is not going to delete um, the prior uh, derogatory history from the credit report, but it, what it will do is remove the status of default. It will remove the status of collection on their report um, from those prior loans. And by creating uh, new loans, they'll obviously build a uh, more positive payment history, which is gonna help to improve their credit score along with all of the efforts that um, we would be employing on top of that. So. Our goal when possible is to get these old negative accounts removed from their report still, but even if that is not possible, um, they're still going to be in a much better position and now you know what their payments are. Um, you may not have to consider that 1% of balance as uh, their monthly payment, perhaps that will help debt to income ratio, especially for those who have really high loan balances. And in some cases, we are able to get uh, a portion or all of the loans forgiven as well, depending on loan type. Um, and of course, most are familiar with the different programs available um, for public workers or teachers. Um, we we do make sure we enroll them in, in any options that are available when it comes to those federal student loans. And we've had a lot of success for that. Our, our, our biggest success is um, we had a client with 500,000 in student loans and after five years of payment, whatever's left will be uh, will be forgiven. So we wanna make sure we explore all those options for our client base. Um, and then when we send them back to you, they're in a great position um, and making good on-time payments again. Okay. All right, so just a couple points shy. I'll spend a little bit of time on this topic. So as loan officers, you have access to rapid rescoring. Um, it perhaps may be called something different at different lenders, but Essentially, you have the algorithm, that AI that looks at the credit report, analyzes it and says, if your borrower takes this action, this action, and this action, their credit score will increase by X number of points. So rapid rescoring is a great solution uh, for finding quick ways to help improve the score. But sometimes the rapid rescoring doesn't get you all the way there or it doesn't find any option available for you. So let's say a borrower is 10, 20 points shy and you, you're gonna lose the deal because either they can't get the interest rate they want or they can't qualify um, because of that 10 points, that 15 points, whatever it is. In these scenarios, we work with our partners to where we will review the credit report and we will determine what credit building options they may have available to them. And I say credit building so vaguely during this presentation, so I, I should go into that a bit more. So when we look at credit building, we would identify some of the things that rapid rescoring already would, right? But we wanna go beyond that and say, if we look at this, uh, at 
what makes a perfect credit score? What is missing from this credit report that could bump the scores up? And then we provide those resources or the ability to fill in those gaps, then we can see improvements. Some of those, um, of those items may be, um, we suggest a consolidation loan. You know, if someone, let's say, let's say, uh, a, let's say the rapid rescoring says, hey, they got to pay off all their credit card debt. And that client's like, mm, that's not possible. Um, in those scenarios, we may suggest a consolidation loan because that's going to fix their utilization ratio as long as that's not a debt to income issue for you. Yes, it's going to create a, you know, more of a paperwork trail that's needed, but maybe be able to get you to the closing. We may suggest that. We also have options for adding rental payment history or adding utility bills, subscription services. Um, or using other credit, what we call credit building tools um, with partnerships that we've created with a lot of other companies um, that add good positive information to the credit report, but doesn't uh, adversely impact debt to income. Um, so essentially boosting their score in that, in that way. So we look at each report and analyze it specific to that report. There's no one size fits all solution, of course. Um, and then we can help come to the table with an option is there always an option 100% of the time that's quick? Absolutely not. Um, but if we can provide that quick option, we will. Um, there is always options available. They just may not be, you know, that ability to resolve something um, in less than 30 days. Sometimes there is and sometimes there isn't. But uh, I would say a large majority of the time, there, there is more we can do than what rapid rescoring identifies. Okay. So improve credit to resolve debt to income ratio issues. So DTI, uh, especially with housing prices continuing to increase and you know mortgage payments having to be higher and higher and higher is a more and more common issue. So when we are working with the client base um, that we have on the credit repair process, we're also working on their debt to income because we know coming to the closing table, we need to make that client look as pristine as possible. Um, we want it to be a smooth underwriting process. So for those clients that, um, let's say obtained a car loan at some point when they had a lower FICO score, um, or they have, uh, let's say personal loans, payday loans, an exorbitant amount of debt. Um, maybe they have uh, collections that you have to calculate into their debt to income ratio because of the dollar amount of the collections, you know, depending on loan program, et cetera. Um, we are going to work to resolve those issues and to limit their cash flow, limit that outflow going out the door and maximize that, obviously, the income they can show, right? Less, less money going out the door, more that they're able to use to qualify for the mortgage. So, um, that is a part of our process. Um, and like I had mentioned earlier, we will do debt consolidation options for high amounts of credit card debt or other consumer debt when it makes sense and it's going to put them in a better position to qualify and then also simultaneously help improve their credit score. As a side note, we would recommend debt consolidation for high amounts of credit card debt because credit cards or any lines of credit factor into the utilization ratio when calculating your credit score. Installment debt does not. So that can be, that alone for some people can be, you know, 70 plus points added to their credit score when we, when we help them with that action. Okay. So those are some of the main examples. There, of course, are many, many scenarios, um, but I wanted to shift into you know, talking about the elephant in the room. So when do credit repair partnerships succeed? I say the elephant in the room because I think many loan officers, um, many realtors have worked with credit repair companies in the past and it's left a very bad taste in their mouth. Um, so when do credit repair partnerships succeed? When do they actually work? Well, one, the credit repair company has to be decent at what they're doing. They have to know what they're doing. They have to understand the law. There's a pretty low barrier of entry to entering into this field. So that can be the challenge for you as a loan officer is to find a good vetted resource that's actually going to help um, your, your prospective borrowers, your borrowers, because it's your name on the line too. So what does make a good partnership? Um, clear, consistent communication to borrowers and loan officers. 
So in our case, we have an established um, portal, and I'll talk about that here in the next slide, that allows both our loan officers and borrowers or clients in our case um, to have full transparency, see everything that we're doing on their behalf, see copies of all of the communications we send on their behalf, see their scores um, change over time and what's been removed from the credit report. Um, we also provide monthly updates, monthly feedback, and we do the same with our loan officers too. Um, a strong educational focus empowering both borrowers and loan officers. So why do I mention that? Um, I think it's so important for a borrower or a client, excuse me, to understand what we're doing and why. Um, and same with our loan officer partners. If there isn't an understanding of how the credit scoring system works, one can't be empowered to make the right decisions or on the loan officer side to properly advise borrowers, especially those who don't need the credit repair process. So we like to do things like this webinar um, and we put on a lot of webinars that are focused on very specific topics like collections or credit cards, you know, whatever we find our client base or our partnership base wants to learn more about. Um, along with that, we enroll all of our clients into a video education series and also a written education series. Everyone learns a little bit different. We try to give um, many different learning styles and opportunities a chance with our client base. And we try to answer those big questions and keep people from going down the path of um, falling victim to some of the um, scams, but also the bad information that just exists on the internet. Um, we also set realistic expectations and don't make false promises to both our clients and loan officers. It, you know, any company that's like, I can guarantee I can do this. Well, one, it, it's illegal for any credit repair organization to make a guarantee. Um, but two, it's not an overnight process. And if you're getting overnight results, it's probably by something that's either illegal or very much on the borderline of being illegal. And, and that's just not, not an ethical way to do business. Um, no false promises either. We wanna make sure everyone is on the same page and um, we're not over promising and under delivering. And again, we place a very big focus on improving credit, not only through removing derogatory information, but adding good information, good positive information to the report. Um, focusing on the law, not just using you know, some tactic that we heard on the internet works once. Um, and actually, we actually read the Fair Credit Reporting Act. Um, we make sure we understand it and how it works. And, you know, there's other applicable laws as well, but I won't drone on about that. Um, and we don't place restrictions on the amount of work completed in a single month. Um, there are organizations out there that will only um, dispute so many items per month or um, send a set amount of a letters per month or look at a client's account so many times. That's That just doesn't make any sense. Um, you know, we should be going all out at every given time to get the process completed as quickly as possible. Um, we also have a strong understanding of the mortgage requirements specific to credit. So uh, before I started this business, I had a background on the mortgage side as well. So that means we're are, you know, we're not a lender. We are not going to try to be a lender. We're not going to try to um, give a lender's advice, but it helps us to know exactly what a lender needs, what needs to, how things need to look for underwriting. I, I used to manage a team of underwriters. Um, so that way everyone's set up for success. And of course, clients need to feel valued. Nobody wants to call a call center and get, you know, the 10th person they've talked to at that company on the phone who has no idea what's going on, what's being worked on. Um, and then that also leads into, you know, being understood and having that team oriented approach where that client feels like you as a loan officer and us as a credit repair company know each other, we work together, we know exactly what's going on for that person. And they feel that that cliche warm fuzzy hug that we that we hear about. So uh, last slide I have prepared here is our client and partner portal. So like I mentioned, we have a client portal and a loan officer partnership portal. Um, it provides educational resources, um, score updates, credit building no notifications. Um, so I already mentioned most of the details, so I won't get in that, into that again. Um, and then again, ongoing education for loan officers and clients. 
Um, we also send tip series to our loan officers so they can employ, um, they can use some of those emails and just send it straight to their prospective client base. Things like um, the difference between different versions of FICO or why Credit Karma isn't actually your credit score. <laughs> those are our main hot topics. Um, and then other things like dealing with defaulted student loans, what's the rehab process look like? Um, so anything that's gonna aid you as a loan officer when it specifically comes to the credit side of things. So um, if you do wanna partner with us, you can find us online, uh, www.insightstrategies.credit, um, or you can always give us a call. This is our main line, 503-395. 3092. Um, it's, of course, free to partner with us. The clients do pay a fee to work with us. Um, and we always give free advice on any report. You ever have a question, you just let us know. Give us a call. We That's what we're here for. Um, so average borrower resolution is about six to eight months. And then for borrowers with no credit, about one to three months. Um, and our partners close more loans. So we don't want you to lose your prospects. Um, our goal is to have you keep more in your pipeline, um, make your clients more sticky, and then get more referrals out of it. So that is what I have today. Uh, we hope you will join us for future webinars. We do different topics. We have a lot of webinars on different case studies. Um, and if there is ever a webinar uh, topic that you want to see, don't hesitate to uh, shoot us an email. Um, you can send an email at info. Uh, info at insightstrategiesllc.com um, or feel free to reply to our emails after uh, after the webinar. Thank you so much for joining.